In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create panoramic photos with Microsoft Photosynth. So here's the Photosynth website. It's at photosynth.net. Um, before I show you how to create your own panoramas, I'm going to show you around the website so that you can see what it can do. Um, when you create a panorama with Photosynth, it's always shared on the website so everyone can see it. And here on the front page, you'll always find some featured synths, some of the really good ones that people have uploaded, um, so you can browse around. So first of all, I'll show you what a synth is. Um, here's one of some penguins, it's really good. So when I'm mousing over the, the image here, you can see these boxes appearing, and those are photos. So if I click on one, if I click on that box, I go to that photo. So what's happened is this person has taken um, 250 pictures um, they're all overlapping of these penguins and then fed them to Photosynth and Photosynth has found how they overlap and it's stuck them all together to create this panorama that we can we can explore. So just by clicking and dragging you can see that I can explore this place with all these penguins and I can use this button here to expand the viewer to fill the screen and then escape to go back to this normal view um, and I can use these buttons to zoom in and this one to zoom out and I can use these ones as well to navigate around the synth just by clicking on these and this bit here is quite good, these highlights um, so I can I can look at these pictures which have been picked out as being particularly interesting. So I can click on this one and you can, when you, when you add a highlight to your synth, you can put um, a little caption to go with it. So if I click on this one of the baby penguin, it takes me straight to it. So if you look around the site, you'll find um, that there are, there are some really amazing synths on here. There's a great one in Venice, there's ones of the pyramids, really good ones. Um, and you can do a search, just search for um, any, any interesting location and um, any famous location, there'll probably be somebody who's done a, a synth of it and you can look through it. So to create your own synth, of course the first thing you have to do is to take some pictures um, and you can see from this one, from this example, um, what kind of pictures you need to take. You need to take a lot first of all. Uh, Microsoft recommends taking maybe 20 to 300 photos for a synth. If you take many more than that, then it'll be really hard for your computer to handle. Um, and if you take too few, then it just won't be very interesting. Um, but an important tip is to make sure that the pictures overlap properly. Um, make sure that when you see these two here, see how they, they, they overlap. If they don't overlap enough or at all, then they won't go into the synth. You can't, it won't allow you to have gaps because it doesn't know how, how things join together. So you must make sure that your, your pictures overlap. Um, so it'll take, like, feel as though you're taking a lot of pictures just for one, one viewpoint. Um, but for, for a 360 degree um, in view of a place, you should maybe aim to take at least 50, um, at least 50 pictures. So once you've got your pictures taken, um, the next thing to do is to click on this create link here. Um, and that will take you to this page where you can download the Photosynth application. So you just need to click on this um, and you will download and install the application. To use Photosynth, you need to have a Windows Live ID. So that's the idea that you, that you use for Hotmail or MSN. If you don't have one, you will be invited to create one. And once you've done that, you will also have to give a name for your Photosynth account. But it's all quite, quite simple stuff. Um, and you'll be taken through that when you install the application, which I've already done on this computer. So here's what you see when you start up Photosynth and create and um, click create new synth um, so you need first of all to add your photos so just click on this um, and mine are kept in a folder on the desktop in the photo synth um, and these are just some pictures of the PC Answers team in the center of Bath and you just need to 
uh, just click on the first one and hold shift and click on the last one and click open. Um, you need to give it a name or, or the synth button will stay greyed out. So just type something in, in here um, and then you can click synth. Um, you can add tags if you like. So perhaps bath, you could tag it with bath and then um, anyone searching for things in bath would, would get this synth. Um, visibility. Uh, you can either have it, um, it, it has to go on the site one way or another. So it's either public, um, where it can be searched for, or unlisted. Um, so you had, you'd have to send somebody the link before they would find it. But of course, it's never, there's no way to have it completely private um, on the site. And this one is about photo rights. So um, this is about the, the rights that you want to attach to your photos. So these ones, this CC stands for Creative Commons, and that means that people can can use your photos. And if you have it on attribution, if they use your photos, they have to give you credit. Um, or you can have them as copyright, all rights reserved. If you want to find out more about what these Creative Commons licenses mean, then um, just, just look up Creative Commons, go to the website and there are full explanations of what all of these mean. When you press Synth, it will begin working on analysing these pictures and joining them all together. There are 28 photos here, and I've done this one already, and it took about 10 minutes to link up all of these photos. And when it's done, it goes on the, onto the site straight away. So to take a look at your, your Synths, um, you need to click on uh, when you're not signed in, it's just up here. You just click on sign in um, and then you go straight to your page. So then if you click on since, then it'll bring up all of your ones. And there's the one I've made, ice cream. So you can see here that it says that it's 79% synthy. And what that means is that it couldn't join all of the photos into the synth because I must have left a space between them. So if we look around here, you can see here's the centre of Bath um, and it ends here. I actually took quite a lot more photos, but I've left this gap so they haven't, they haven't been um, joined into the synth. So when you take your photos, be really careful to make sure that they overlap. The settings for this synth are, are all just around here. So if I want to make it unlisted, then I can click there or change the name. It's there. Um, to add the highlights that go down the side, I've just, just made one already. You just need to click on this one. Edit synths and highlights. And then you can pick photos to go along the side on the highlight bar. Just wait for it to load up. So I can just click on any picture if I want. So if I click this one um, and click Add Highlight, selected that picture, and then just add a title, and that's the title in there, and then the caption is the thing that appears alongside. And that's how you do a highlight. Here in Settings, you can uh, you can change the starting image, so that's quite that's quite good because you probably want to have the most interesting one or an interesting one as the first thing that people see. So you can just select select the image and then click on Use Current Image um, to determine which is the starting one. And when you finish changing your settings, just click Save and then click Exit to go back to the main synth page. So if you want to share this synth with um, with anyone, with your friends, then you can just highlight this URL and copy that into an email and, and then they'll be able to go straight to your synth. So that's all there really is to it. Um, it's a really easy way to create a panorama because all the work's done for you. That's, that's Photosynth.